Can you hear me okay, Steve? I hear Megan. Hello. Not sure they can hear us.
Sean. Hey, May. Hi, Sean. Hi, Scott. Hi, everybody. Hello, Council Chambers. <clears throat> Negative. Hey, Michelle. Rochelle, I don't hear any sounds. Just Mr. Nelson's sounds. The dog over here is being very noisy. I think she's comfortable now. She's joining us. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the City of Meridian Solid Waste Advisory Commission's uh, regular meeting for May 26th, 2021. Uh, it is now five minutes after four and we'll start with roll call. Please indicate if you are connected or present. Mark Nelson. Connected. I can see you, so I'm gonna mark you here. Uh, Steve Corey, present. Scott Walters. Connected. Problem is on our end, just a second. Okay, so Sean Keating. Here. Meg Larson. Connected. And Randy Spiewak. Here. Uh, Isabel Cow. Rochelle Klein. Present. And Councilwoman Liz Strader. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second until we get the uh, audio fixed on this. Okay, quorum being present, we'll go ahead and move on with the uh, agenda. Uh, you have a draft agenda that was sent out. Are there comments on the draft agenda? Mr. Chair, I don't have any comments, but I would move to approve the agenda as written. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the agenda be approved as written. Are there further comments? Further comments? Sensing the commission is ready for a vote. All those in favor of approving the agenda as written signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Motion passes, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, the minutes from the April 28th meeting. Um, are there any comments on the draft minutes? Mr. Chair, I don't have any comments, but I move to approve them as written. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the draft minutes from the April 28th meeting be approved as written. Are there further comments? Further comments? Sensing the commission is ready for a vote. All those in favor of approving the draft minutes for the April 28th, 2021 meeting as written, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? The motion passes, thank you. Next on the agenda is community acknowledgement. And I think the only thing I really wanna say on this is uh, thank you again to Republic Services for the billing insert, the uh, uh, providing the information to our customers uh, and clients about the transfer station, the wood waste recycling, the household hazardous waste and curb placement. 
will probably save us a little bit in questions from them. So thank you. Mr. Chair. Scott, Commissioner Walters. I have a, a, a request of uh, Rochelle. If she could send me a PDF of that document, I'm no longer a resident of Meridian, so I don't get that in. Yes, I will definitely send you a, a PDF, Commissioner Walters. Thank you. And so with that, then we'll move into program reports. Uh, the third item, next item on this is Meridian Transfer Station signage update. Rochelle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, commissioners. We, uh, since the last time we met, we rebranded and moved um, the recycling center and took constructive comments um, into consideration. And we uh, allow people now to come into the transfer station and veer there's directional signs saying where um, the transfer station um, recycling center can be found. And then we had um, what I thought were really big signs, but uh, I think they're four foot long and two foot wide or yeah, no, three foot long, two foot high signs, metal signs put above each container identifying the material in a different color. And then we had the same color and material stickers on each container. So cardboard is one specific color. And then the, the cardboard container is labeled with the same color and the same signage as the big metal sign above it. So for example, and we have um, mixed paper and cardboard and glass and um, tin and aluminum cans and then squishy water bottles. Um, all identified on the side of our um, building. Um, so the signs are up so people can see what goes where. And then we also have the directional signs from the time you pull in, kind of directing you over to that facility. And then we also have signs saying no illegal dumping. And um, also you, the site is under surveillance. So hopefully that will dissuade anybody from leaving um, non, you know, unacceptable or non-recyclable materials behind. And we do find, um, I've been walking it and Bob Olson, who is our site supervisor has been walking it. And we will find people will throw in like a cardboard box with bubble wrap and packaging still in it. So when we do find that we, we each take turns walking by and just grabbing what we can out of it. He has, a, we have a, like a grabber and we will pull boxes out and pull out the, the unacceptable materials to keep everything clean. But for the most part, I think it's really helped and people now know where to go and they know what can be recycled and contamination is low, but the or lower. But the funny thing is, um, despite the fact that these metal signs looked really big in my office up on the building, they look fairly small. So I think we're going to get bigger signs. Um, that was the feedback I've been getting from almost everybody is, although we have metal signs above the containers and they're not big once you're far away, I guess, is the gist of it. So we'll probably be making bigger signs to make sure people can see um, from at least the transfer station floor what needs to be recycled where. So we have plenty of use for signs in that area. So more, more would just be more helpful, I guess. So with that, any questions? Have any of you used the recycling center in the last month? Okay, any feedback for me? Um. Mr. Chair, Rochelle, I found it to be easier to navigate for sure. I had gone previously several months back and um, had a heck of a time finding where to go. So I think it's a big improvement and the labeled containers are helpful. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I was in there maybe three weeks ago and I noticed that uh, there's a backup of cars trying to get in, which is fine. Uh, Instead of coming in the normal entrance and going to the guard shack, we went further down and came back around and we drove right by the place where all the crushed glass is shoved up and uh, it was all over the road. Uh, we were driving through all that broken glass. I think it just is probably not normal, but uh, if, if we're going to extend that line down, okay. we probably ought to check the glass first. Okay, thank you. I will, I will definitely make sure I talk to our folks about that. Usually it doesn't go beyond the bunker. Yeah. It's usually contained in the bunker. Um, and then we, we generally only pull people through that north gate if, there's a, if the line backs onto Franklin and we need to pull traffic off of Franklin. It was that day. So, um, so we do pull people forward, but that's good to know, and especially on a busy day, if, um, I'll make sure that, that, um, that we talk to the supervisor about that. And the other the feedback I did get was, people came and they found the recycling area, but they didn't find where the bulky metals went. So people would come in to recycle like a water heater or a barbecue and they'd say, here, we get all these nice like little containers with 
you know, that with, you know, two foot by two foot windows, which you're obviously not going to thread a water heater through. So I might add one more sign for bulky metals, just to make sure people know to drive a little bit past the recycling area and off to the right, there's a bulky metal section. Thank you though, for that feedback. Anybody else? No? All right, thank you. Thank you, Rochelle. Moving on to the next item, number four is uh, recycle a bicycle update. Uh, Rochelle, can you give us some? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, we, uh, I was going to work yesterday uh, with Commissioner Keating on repairing bikes. And I sent out a last minute call um, for help from the whole committee, but it turned out to not work because of thunder and lightning and the conditions were terrible. So we're going to meet next Tuesday and we do have a, a large order of bikes from Meridian Elementary School to fill. So that'll be our target before summer. We have quite a few bikes and I normally move them out to the VRT storage area and we've been hanging on to them because we don't want to move them out there just to move them back to Meridian Elementary School. So our committee is getting together next Tuesday um, afternoon, kind of late afternoon to repair bikes. And then we will be, um, we'll, we'll, I, haven't, I don't have a date yet for Meridian Elementary School, but we will be getting together and delivering bikes to Meridian Elementary within like a week after that before school's out. So I think it's going to be really soon. So the principal will be getting back to us actually by Friday of this week. So, um, so we're doing well, we're still getting lots of bikes. Um, we're also partnering with Safe Routes to School. So the bikes that are at the Valley Regional Transit are being used also uh, for like Nampa Housing Authority, like some, some areas um, with low income residents um, to increase their, uh, not just activities as a family, but also access to grocery stores and stuff like that. Like in North Nampa, um, right now, there are a lot of folks who are pedestrian uh, residents and there's not a grocery store in North Nampa and not a lot of access. So we did get a request from Nampa Housing Authority to help with some bikes there. So, so we went a little beyond our Meridian borders, but we're helping a lot of people. So, and those were bikes that we'd already repaired and were in storage. Tuesday, June 1st. Yep. And so, yeah, yeah. Tuesday, June 1st. And uh, is that actually going to be doing repairs on the bike or is it? Yep. Logistic? Repairs on bicycles. We will have the Meridian Elementary School list and we have some of them that we are ready to deliver and others will be fixing that night to make sure we have all the bikes. And then we'll make a last run out to storage to make sure we get any remaining bikes that we might need but yep it'll be a bike repair session if anybody wants to join us okay and what time is that or what time should people show guys. up if they want to be involved uh commissioner uh nelson keating walters what do you think like four o'clock is that the right time i can be there by 4 30. okay let's say 4 30 and if you're there earlier we can just set up but 4 30 next tuesday just at the come to the main reception there yep. of, uh, of Re Republic. Yep, just come into the front office and I'll meet you guys, anyone who wants to repair bikes there and we'll just walk to the back and we have chairs and tools. These guys have tools, I have no tools, but we, uh, we'll, we'll have tools to share and uh, we can repair bikes. Yeah, if you're interested, that would be fantastic. Okay, of course, all commissioners are welcome. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions or comments on what Rochelle has uh, presented? Just thank you for keeping the program going, yeah. despite the pandemic. <laughs> Thanks for showing up again and again. <laughs> We're happy to do it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would echo that. I really commend the members of the commission and Rochelle. I mean, it's just fantastic program and to get those bikes to, to kids and families that need them is awesome. Thank you. Further comments? Well, thank you, Rochelle. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next item, uh, item five, squeaky water bottle pilot project outcomes. Um, I imagine that's squishy, but anyway. Uh, oh, this is, is that squeaky. something for? <laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> Joanne and I are working. <laughs> We're catches is catch can, right? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So Joanna and I talked about this project, and I think SWAC approved the recycling container funding for this recycling project uh, or pilot project through June. Isn't that right? Through June. And so far it's been cool weather. Um, we haven't done a really fantastic job advertising it. And um, I think we've, we've thrown it out there a few times. 
lot of people don't know it's there. So we haven't even hauled it once and it's only about a third full. And so because SWAC, but I guess we have a couple options. SWAC had budgeted um, a certain amount of money for it. We assumed it would be hauled at least was a weekly, I think, or twice a, twice a month. So every other week and we haven't hauled it yet. So um, because the funding is dedicated, but we expected it to run out at the end of June, we can just leave it on site and then extend the project until we do haul it and kind of use up the money that we had budgeted, or we can, SWAT can decide to save the money and pull the plug on the project in June. So it's really a matter of making sure people know it's there and um, it is gonna be there for another month, but then after that, it's really up to SWAC, I think, what we thought. Bill, do we need to, I imagine if we want it to go beyond June, um, we need to vote. Do we need to go ahead and make a recommendation to council? This is a no cost, I guess, extension, but right. regardless. So Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I, I, since there is no additional cost you're incurring, um, I don't think you need to update the council at this point. If, if you want to discontinue the program, I would probably update them about that. But if you're going to just use the money, just that you're extending it out a little bit further to allow the, it to maybe pick up steam and pick up interest and use. I don't think the council needs to be concerned about that. Thank you. Do we need to go ahead and have an action from the commission to go ahead and extend the from June though? Yes, sir. Okay. Members of the commission, do you have any comments or questions of Rochelle? Um, Mr. Chair, Rochelle, just a clarifying question. If we do extend <clears throat> the program, it sounds like there's some uncertainty as to when we would actually get to hauling it. So we wouldn't know like, or what would be the right time frame for the extension? So thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Larson. I would say that we would commit to keeping it there through the end of the fiscal year, which would be through the end of September. So, you know, we have budgeted every other week hauls. We haven't done like any hauls yet. So even if it goes, if we have to donate a few hauls, I would say we would like, we would be expecting to, at least continue the program till the end of the fiscal year, because then it starts to cool off by October. So use would drop off anyway, or by then we could come back and decide, you know, talk about maybe if you want to leave it there longer, but, but I know what's budgeted and that may, even if that gets us through, let's say mid August, we would be willing to keep it out there through the, through the summer. Thank you. Commissioners, further questions or comments? Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, Rochelle, um, is there a sign at the transfer station for, for that one you were saying? Yeah, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Kenny, there is just, it's in the row with everything else. So it'll say, you know, glass, squishy water bottles, cardboard. It's, it's in the row of, with everything else. So it's definitely labeled and out there. I just don't think a lot of people know that it's available and uh, except for people who are using the recycling center to drops, you know, they'll see it. And um, so it's probably something we should add to um, just keep talking about. So more and more people learn that it's out there. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, I, um, yeah, I would support that we continue that making that available through the fiscal year. Do we need to make a motion to that effect? So shall I take that as a motion that the uh, program be extended through the end of the fiscal year? That was my intent. <laughs> I second that, opposed to my motion. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded that the uh, pilot project for squishy water bottles be uh, extended through the end of the fiscal year. Um, are there further comments on the motion? Seeing no comments, I will go ahead and uh, call for the vote. All those in favor of extending the squishy water bottle pilot project through the end of the fiscal year, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? The motion passes, thank you.
With that, we'll move on to item six, trash or treasure spring cleanup update. I know I was able to take a couple of photos and forwarded them to Joanna. And uh, one of the employees up at the Ada County Landfill had taken a number of photos to put into their newsletter. We've received those photos. But uh, if any of the commissioners had a chance to take some photos of some of the material, we're still very much wanting those. And if they could be uh, sent to Joanna, that'd be very appreciated. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Rochelle. Oh, to me? <laughs> oh, to Joanna to go ahead and discuss the, the uh, this year, 2021's activity. So this year was fabulous. We had a terrific turnout. Oops, hold on. Yeah, not working. So we had 899 households sign up approximately for Trash or Treasure, and that's up from 470 last year. And there was a very strong social media push uh, through different outlets, as well as uh, we did one column all um, around mid-month, and then the Monday before we did a second column all to all residents, and that helped increase the interest. These are some pictures of some of the items that we had uh, put out. And there was fabulous patio set, and <laughs> some games, the toilet, and a bicycle, a fridge that someone put in their garage, as well as a, a cabinet. Lots of great items were put out. Uh, some comments. Um, just from some of our residents that they it was just so nice to, to be able to keep these items out of the landfill and to not have to make a trip to the donation center. Um, they were able to get a patio set, store, their storage cabinet for the garage, the working mini fridge, plus a new bike, which was very exciting for them. And they wanted to send thank you for the hard work and enormous effort it must have taken to uh, make the effort uh, or make the event possible. So that led us into spring cleanup, which followed immediately after that weekend. And that was uh, extremely popular. So we had uh, 1,648 houses that Republic picked up items from for that first week. Uh, the, with the extreme interest, it did extend into the next week and we had an additional 86 houses. So 1,734 houses. And that's uh, up from just under 1,500 houses last year. So this is, uh, great that there's so much participation, but it also created many challenges. We will need to rethink how we work this program next year. We did have a lot of unacceptable items that were unfortunately left out to be picked up, such as car parts, um, uh, an abundance of fence posts with concrete, uh, as well as tires. Um, this picture is an example of just one house uh, and there was just too many items. Um, so, and then with the, uh, the time was just too limited to pick up this many items at that many houses within one week. So that's the summary. Rochelle, did you have anything you'd like to add? Sure, thank you. And that you did a great job summarizing exactly what, what happened on the street. It was very busy for us. And I think this um, at this time we have to, this is our first year we've had to just formally acknowledge Meridian's a big city. So what, even with all of our resources and drivers on deck, it was too big to get everything done in one week. So what we would have suggestions for next year to, to improve it is, Maybe we, we already have unlimited recycling for two weeks because customers are either a green week or a red week. And so um, we already kind of extend unlimited service for two weeks. So our suggestion would be next year, we split spring cleanup to match up, not trash or treasure, but we split, split 
his spring cleanup to match customers recycling week. So that way our folks, I mean, there were long wait times on the phone because every time we stop for like a stop the size of that picture that you saw, you know, it's 20 to 30 minutes that the drivers are loading the truck and picking stuff up, you know, where if you expect five minutes to stop to be throwing stuff and you, you, you know, it increase that at least three or four times. That means people down the line, the drivers are going to run out of hours before their DOT acceptable hours before they can get their route done. So it caused big route delays. Um, so we would suggest considering splitting spring cleanup to match up with customers recycling weeks, like still have trash or treasure. And then just for those people who have that first week, like let's say it's a green week, then they have their unlimited week and the next week it'd be red week. Um, and then people would know, put my stuff out when I put my recycling cart out. So hopefully it would be pretty intuitive. A couple other things I think that um, would help, um, we would really want to push the, um, the, I guess, making sure that that contents out at the curb are household contents. Like it was clear, like this one customer had an auto body shop. I mean, he had bumpers and fenders and car doors and stuff like that. That's not really household generated waste. Like the idea is to help you spruce up your garden and stuff. Um, you know, we had things like fence posts with concrete balls at the bottom. We can't compact those. They don't crush in a truck, the, the concrete um, pianos. Um, it's hard for even a two person crew to load a piano in the back. So I think we have to probably put some sideboards of like, you know, bulky metals, um, you know, swing sets and barbecues and things like that we expect, but not um, a lot of business metals or things like that. So I think if we do a better job at defining what household waste is or maybe what it isn't, um, we have a good idea going forward. Um, I think also we had th over 30 televisions out at the curb to be thrown away. Um, you know, that's just something that we, we encourage people it's not illegal to put them in the landfill, but we definitely encourage them to, those are considered hazardous waste. And we would, you know, the, the old, um, tele, old style televisions. And we would encourage people to drop those off at the HHW uh, mobile collection site any Monday from noon to seven. Instead, we had over 30 um, televisions and then we wound up bringing a lot of those back um, to our office. But um, also a, an acknowledgement ahead of time, if people did put out Freon appliances, so we had fridges out there. So then we would follow up with a call and just say, so spring cleanup is designed for non-Freon appliances, but you have a fridge out. And so it's maybe just an acknowledgement saying, if you have a fridge or an air, big air conditioning unit or something that's a Freon appliance, maybe we can get them their acknowledgement ahead of time that this is the fee for collecting um, a Freon appliance. And then we have to evacuate, hire someone to evacuate the Freon. And it's just, a, it just can't be recycled. Um, the bulky metal can't be just recycled like regular metals. Um, these are all customer service feedback notes, by the way. These are not for me. I mean, they, I just assembled all of them together. Um, another one would be, I guess some people said they had bulky items, but they left the form blank. And so we weren't sure what we were collecting. And so we got to like one house and there was a basketball hoop with concrete on the bottom. Um, and they said, you know, then we called them back and said, we'll need you to take the backboard off. And, you know, we, we just went through, if it's better if we know ahead of time what we're getting. I guess some people didn't write what they said. Yes, I have a bulk yen, but they didn't write down what that would be. Uh, another thing is, um, I don't know how many of these we had, but verify the location. We had some people sign up for um, trash or treasure or spring cleanup as far as Caldwell. Did you see that too? So we had some folks outside of Meridian signing up um, so when we caught those, if we had contact numbers, we'd call them back and say, this is a Meridian city program, but I don't know if we can hem that in and just have folks in the city of Meridian sign up. Um, and let's see. Oh, oh. And then also maybe add a service day. Like, so we have people's addresses, but then the customer service rep would look up the service day and then get them over to scheduling. But if we have them fill it out. It's one, it'll help move the calls through and this customer service piece faster. If you say, Oh, I'm a Friday, then they can immediately like schedule you for Friday versus it just saves on the computer time, which part of the, we had just really long phone wait time. So we were looking at ways to reduce the wait times on the phone to increase customer satisfaction. What did you, what did you hear anything else besides those notes? Just Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, um, Rochelle, one of the things I was curious, especially seeing that one with the ginormous pile of stuff on the sidewalk, and maybe this is part of the education process for next year, because this sort of exploded on us all, I mean, as the popularity of it, but 
we really want to make sure people keep sidewalks clear enough that you can get by. Uh, we haven't gotten any ADA complaints that I'm aware of, but we probably will at some point when people start stacking pianos and logs and timber on the sidewalk yeah. and then yeah. not move it, which is the bigger problem. You know, I mean, I, I think the information made it clear you had to move it back onto your lawn or onto your property if your service day wasn't until the next Thursday or whatever, like, like mine. Um, so that might be something we'll have to do a more diligent effort on and advising people to move it and make sure it's clear for walking. Um, the other thing I wondered is would it, instead of you folks having to reach out to those people, you know, constantly, it, would it make sense? You guys ha have stickers when you, when you like, if the, the lid isn't closed, right, or it's not done, they'll put a sticker on it to tell them why they didn't pick it up. Maybe in the maybe for next year, getting stickers so your drivers to just stick it on there to say this can't be picked up as spring cleanup. You'll have to call us. You know, here's the number. You know, this has to be a bulky item or bring it to transportation. Whatever info we could put on it, and then they could just slap a sticker on it. Then they're not going to call you back and say you forgot to come, and then you're going to say no, we didn't forget to come. We can't pick that up. Right. So a, those are great ideas, actually. That might help them do it a little bit faster on the ginormous piles those reminded me of the old pictures before we went to the single can pickups where we had people stacking up desks and everything up on the sidewalk so maybe that in the future but yeah definitely i'm concerned about the ada issue of access for people sure thank you john did you want to respond to rochelle's uh curiosity if you had any additional items to add to the her presentation I don't think so. I think you captured most of what the concerns were. Um, and we definitely want to work with our IT department next year to try and qualify some of the information that's being put in so that the, the citizens know if there's a challenge with what they're requesting before they get to that day. Thank you. Members of the commission, do you have any comments or questions of uh, the information Rochelle presented? Uh, Mr. Chair, Rochelle, just if you could just say briefly a, a little bit more about like how how we would communicate to folks about the kinds of things that are household waste versus a business or, you know, things that they can't put out. Would that be happening when they sign up? They would get a little flyer to read or like what, what do you see happening there? Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Larson. I, I'm not exactly sure. We had a really, maybe in our column all, if we sent a text out and I should have written down how successful that was, but it was really successful. And then we talked to Joanna and she said, let's send one more. And that, or Emma, and we that really, that second one really boosted it. I think a lot of participation, but maybe in, in the texts that we sent out, or maybe when they sign up online, just saying, this is really a household program and you have to, imagine one or maybe two drivers trying to collect this stuff um like a piano is just hard like to lift a big piano in the back you know into, onto a truck or something it just is we had some really big items so maybe i would just say you know are these household generated things like and we can even give examples like basketball hoops with the footing still on like cement footing or um you know car parts or things like that uh fence posts like construction debris uh, we had just big piles of concrete that people put out like they broke up a driveway or a sidewalk and just stacked the big chunks of concrete out so maybe just say th this is really designed for house a household event as a household event versus you know construction debris or um you know i don't know but we can probably remind them like with social media or the text that we send out or maybe next year we can send the newsletter out in April since um you know try to get the newsletter out ahead of time with some parameters I mean I think that this program is young and so I love I think it was wildly successful and people love being able to get rid of all their stuff it was a big deal for a lot of people and um so I think that was that, that was exciting. So I think people are open to things. I love Bill's idea of saying we couldn't take this for this reason, you know, so, and then also maybe even limiting the number of bulky items, like saying we can pick up eight bulky items or 10 bulky items, you know, but whether that's like a dining room table and eight chairs, for example, or something. Um, but some people line the whole sidewalk and I, I don't even know where they got, they must have shaken their house on the side to empty that many contents out at the curb. I have no idea where they got the stuff or, um, but maybe we cap it and just say we can take up to 10 bulky items or something um, or 
something along those lines. I don't know what your thoughts are about that, but just sort of put some sideboards on it. Yeah, that's I think, a great idea. Oh, thank you. I think it's it's tricky, um, you know, because if I would count a dining set as one item, <laughs> right, table right. on the chairs, that's one item. But um, yeah, it's tricky how to communicate, you know, something that's a little bit complicated is simply, you know, maybe it's everything that can fit in a four by six square or something, you know, something, or I don't know what you would do, because I think it's, it's always going to be a little bit confusing. You know, it's a household item. It was at my house. So yeah, you know, tricky to communicate when you can't have a conversation with folks, I think. If you think can't it, lift it, neither can we. Oh, I like that. So that's Ooh, great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Or just construction debris. We did wind up with a fair amount of construction debris, um, shingles, like stacks of shingles and asphalt shingles and stuff. So um, maybe we say household contents instead of, you know, constr and I don't, nobody cares if it's a small amount, but when you break up a whole walkway to your front porch and put it out in the curb, I don't think that's really like a household, you know, spring cleanup kind of thing. So um, maybe we just define it better as, you know, not ex excluding construction debris. Or I like Scott's idea of if we can't lift it, you know, you if you can't lift it, we can't lift it. Mr. Um, Chairman. Bill. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, Rochelle, maybe one of the other things, people are really good with visuals. So if you use photos like this, not that, uh, to for folks to understand what what's the intent here so that they aren't putting because because I would agree with Commissioner Larson I mean if people have work in their home all the time now lots of people have home offices and they will have a filing cabinet mm -hmm. or something like that that they would consider to be a household item um, people have home businesses of, of various kinds but yeah I would agree with you car parts and batteries and things like that aren't appropriate and that's not what's intended so I mean it, it is, it is, I think, again, a, a education process for everybody. I mean, again, we're influx of people in the community. It's new to them. Um, it's not new to us, but you know, I think, I think between Republic and the city, we can certainly help craft better communication to the public so that they know it's not a big pile of things. It's, you know, the, the toilet, the, the books, <laughs> the game, a bike, you know, it's not all these other things. And I think there are, to be fair to some folks like the refrigerator, right? Now that's a free on item, right? But someone took it. So they were thinking, well, someone's going to take this. It probably would never end up with you guys, but right. sometimes they do. Yeah, that's true too. They thought it'd probably go for spring cleanup. Yeah. And that one fridge did. So I think these are great ideas. And I think overall, we want the message to be, this was hugely successful. Our, I mean, I think the residents all loved having this chance to just like purge all this stuff that they've been hanging on to for a year. So I think it's a great program. We look forward to it next year. We're hoping to split it next year so that we have enough, we can actually pick stuff up on people's service day because once we got behind, like by Tuesday, then it kind of snowballed. Then we would start finishing Tuesday, Wednesday morning, and then it kind of rolled back into the next week. So then we had calls where people thought they were missed and they were missed just because their regular trash got picked up, but not their spring cleanup items. So I think we could do get a, a lot more traction by splitting it and just, it's a big city. So we have to just well and i think we might want to emphasize as well that it's supposed to be from your house so it's not like i registered and i had my all my neighbors bring the stuff to my house because i already put that on the list and they don't have to bother with it that's not the point so. right i'm gonna commissioners further comments or questions I have a, a comment, uh, Rochelle, I'd be happy to help next year with this, uh, you and the city to come up with some messaging or maybe a short video. <clears throat> Thank you, that would be fantastic. I mean, it'd be easy to do, I think. Easy for you, right? <laughs> Not for the rest of us, but thank you, that'd be great. Uh, Rochelle, I have a comment, uh, just walking around my neighborhood, it, uh, a lot of people you know, participated and, and um, when I went back to take the picture of, uh, it was all gone. So I didn't even take the beginning pictures, but a lot, a lot of things did happen. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun to see that. Thank you. Yeah. And I do think people had fun kind of shopping at the curb too. Thanks for that feedback. That's another good tagline shopping at the curb. Oh, I'm making that note.
And I do have to say, this is a unique program and other cities have asked us how we do it here. So um, neighboring cities in the, in the Treasure Valley have said, we wanna copy that and do that too. So I like that we're doing it here and leading the way. Okay, I believe uh, probably the key will be, Rochelle, you getting with the city to go ahead and work with what is able to be done with communication and such with our system. And if there's some more programmatic changes like splitting weeks or whatever else, get that back to us at a uh, reasonable time so that we can get it um, taken care of before next year's okay. event. Thank you. And uh, with that, I will go ahead and move us on to seven, the Eagle Meridian glass hauling issue. Uh, Rochelle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, this is one that we talked about last, um, last SWAC meeting. And just, um, I guess, um, as just a reminder, I, I sent a, a memo over to Joanna, but it kind of late and I delivered it to the um, just the commissioners that were here, but just by way of history for the GLASS program and where we started and where we came, um, we, uh, I'll just walk through it really fast. Republic Services merged with Sanitary Services in April of 2012. And at that point in time, one of the, um, the, the Meridian SWAC at the time had asked about glass recycling. So glass recycling was available in Boise. And um, that was a priority back in 2012. And we canvassed, you know, this part of the United States looking for options. We even looked at sending glass via coal car to Portland and places like that. And it wasn't until 2018 that we found an, um, momentum recycling in Salt Lake City. And so we brought forward that option for uh, the city of Meridian. They take the glass or they were willing to take the glass from this area, which is fantastic. And um, they crush it into a collet and then they sell it to Owens Corning and it's made into both fiberglass insulation and roofing as well. Some, some of it's in the roofing material. So um, that was a good durable long-term solution. We had some pilots that popped up, but we didn't feel like they were really good long-term options for the city. So we held off. And in 2018, we found momentum recycling and um, we talked to them about signing an agreement and we entered an agreement with them. And um, at the time that we entered the agreement, we had everything finalized by early March of 2019. And at that time we put two drop sites, um, we staged two drop sites at the uh, Meridian Transfer Station. One is outside the gate, so people have access 24 seven, and one is inside the gate at the recycling center. Uh, we also launched curbside glass for people who wanted to just recycle from home and not haul it to the transfer station. And so um, we, we launched both um, concurrently and both have been um, fantastic. So lots of participation in glass. and. I was talking to Bill Neri earlier today. We were surprised. Uh, a lot of people have didn't know the glass was there after all this time. So I bet we see even more glass um, coming in through the gate. So it's a super successful program. Um, we have the three dedicated boxes for the city of Meridian, one outside the gate, one inside the gate, and one we call a swing box. So when one glass container is full, we pull it back and put an empty one in its place until we can dump and then semi-crush the glass from that container. And then uh, we, keep that, we always keep an empty one on hand. Um, and then earlier this year, we had um, the option of bringing like um, Eagles glass program has been growing too. And we've been taking their glass to environmental abrasives in Boise. Um, environmental abrasives is really at capacity. So we looked at um, combining it with Meridians and sending it down to Momentum Recycling. Um, and that's a much more durable long-term option uh, for Eagle. And the um, advantage um, for combining the glass is um, it splits the transloading costs for the city of Meridian in half. So for example, we have three containers um, rent, like rented each month for the city of Meridian. So it's $309 and 48 cents for um, just the container rent. And then the transload charge charges are $212 each time we semi crush it and load it and, and handle the glass. And right now that's roughly every five weeks. Um, although as a glass program is getting busier, that's shortening. So roughly about 10 times a year. Um, so if we combine um, glass from Eagle and Meridian, then that splits that 
charge in half. The 212 drops down to $106 per event. So it would be a saving if savings if we continue, you know, every five weeks roughly, it'd be a savings about of about $1,060 per year to the city of Meridian. Um, and then just the proposed change would benefit the city um, financially and, and Eagle, it'd be a much more durable long-term solution. And um, so we would recommend combining the two cities together. And we just wanna bring that forward to SWAC for consideration. Members of the commission, do you have questions on the material that Rochelle has presented? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Rochelle, and those are all positives right there with uh, combining both. And that sounds awesome for the residents of Meridian. So uh, that sounds like a good, good thing. I would vote on that. Uh, Mr. Chair, Rochelle, um, is there is there a, a risk, or, or are we close to, or do you have a sense of capacity for momentum? Is there, you know, Meridian continues to grow, and as more people learn about the program, are we going to bump up against the limit with how much glass they can take? So great question, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Larson. Um, the answer is at this point they're saying unlimited, so we have to give them a five days notice, and they dispatch. Um, a, a semi with a trailer um, and then to handle Eagle's glass so that we're not combining glass in the same trailer. They send a, a trailer and I don't know all the language, but and then, a, and then a second trailer attached to the first one. So it's like a tandem, um, two trailers. So um, they're saying they can take an unlimited amount of glass. So they need the glass as long as building keeps occurring. Uh, in the Northwest, um, they're in a good position where some markets, you know, as they slow down, this Northwest area um, is really supply, the Owens Corning supply for fiberglass installation and shingles tends to come from that Salt Lake plant. And so um, they're saying, even if the growth of this area, like commercial and industrial and residential growth slows a little bit, they're still gonna have a huge demand because it's for the entire, region that they supply it. So they're happy to come up. They've bought, they've purchased new equipment since they started hauling um, Meridian's glass. We started asking for more frequent hauls and they started buying more equipment. So they're all in. They said the more, the better. So um, we don't expect them to, and it was very strategic. This plant apparently closed like 10 years ago or something because they thought they had a better location and a better operating uh, and better operating conditions somewhere else. And so they mothballed this plant and then they opened this one back up and said, this definitely is better for trans like transportation around the whole region. Salt Lake city is better. So they brought it out of, you know, I guess it was, it was really mothballed and they brought it back into production and they are saying they would love as much glass as they can get. So I think we're okay, I guess. Mr. Chairman, at the last meeting, uh, I was uh, suggested that maybe to help expand the program, uh, we contact uh, neighborhood groups, homeowners associations. So I got on the phone and called about a dozen of the ones I know just out of curiosity and asked them to talk to some of their homeowners to see how well it was, uh, it was communicated and if they had any uh, uh, adversity of, of, of doing it. Here were the comments, almost all of them. One, they didn't have enough glass to warrant another can in their garage okay. uh, or behind the fence. Most neighborhoods don't let you put it out front. And the second was the transfer station just wasn't con uh, convenient to go deliver a small box or bags of glass. Can you speak to so, the microphone, please? Uh, so uh, I uh, it wasn't convenient for small, uh, for small quantities to go out to the transfer station. So I kind of took both of those responses and I, here's an idea for you. If we were to provide neighborhoods or HOAs a blue can, let them put it at their clubhouse, a park or wherever they would be a central location serving from 100 to 400 uh, homes it, with one can uh, and picked up on your regular schedule, you might get some takers. It had to be well marked, you know, glass only, no metal lids, no garbage, what have you. But it may be worthwhile. 
Thank you. Um, that's a um, that's a good consideration. So what we find is anytime you share glass, there's broken glass on the ground. So we'd have to have people responsible for, um, I know we had a, some issues in Eagle where kids were just monkeying around and they were breaking the glass for fun. And they, you know, like their glass is just one of those things where you just have to have a really responsible party for it. And I, I totally agree. Like sometimes you just don't generate a lot of glass in your house to warrant taking it to the transfer station or, or paying for a cart. Um, if they want to sign up for service together, they can definitely call our office. And if they if they have one responsible party for it, they can definitely call and sign up for service. Yeah. We'd be happy to do that as long as someone knows the, just the obligations that come with it. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for doing a little survey. It's good to hear what the public thinks, so. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Scott. I'd like to ask Mr. Neri if there are legal obligations or considerations that we need to think about in collaborating mixing Eagle and Meridian glass. So Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, Commissioner Walters. So we did look at our ordinance. Uh, that was a concern about the hauling of it through the city, but there's nothing in the ordinance that prohibits our franchisee from doing it as long as it's okay with the city. And since it saves the city money, I, I don't see a downside from the city's perspective. Um, it might be good at some point when we update the, the council on the glass program to, to bring this up, bring the specific point up so they're aware of what's happening. But again, th there appears to be no downside from the city's perspective to doing this, so. Thank you. So Joanna or uh, Bill, do we as a commission need to take an action at this particular point? I don't, I don't think so. I just seem more like an update just of where we are. There isn't any, we're not extending anything. We're not paying more for something. I mean, no, I don't think so. Thank you. Commissioners, further comments on what's been presented to the commission? Mr. Chair, is, is this something that we could recommend and does it have to go through council or can we just recommend this kind of approach in it, uh, take advantage of it now without waiting until some update to council. This one seems kind of a low resistance item. Uh, the, the chair was understanding that uh, no action was necessary, that it could be um, implemented um, at the discretion of Republic to go ahead and reduce the cost of uh, doing the activity and just uh, uh, have that reflected in the billing going forward. Um, I know Rochelle is shaking her head yes, so I think uh, that that is the understanding at this point. No action is necessary for this to be implemented. And uh, just one question. Uh, so this is a year by year program, correct? It's, and it's part of our uh, fee schedule. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so at some point we'll have to go back is, is it funded for the next fiscal year? Or is that a conversation with the council? I believe, I believe that that's, um, I, I think when, when we go back to rates and they allocate money for the next year. So I don't think the budget for next year has been approved. So I think that's up to the council if they approve it again, or if SWAC covers the costs or something like that. So the, so the rate setting meeting, when we talk to them about the rates would probably be the good time to update them on this program and how the cost has been lowered by allowing this, our ordinance allows it, that that may be the most opportune time to bring that forward. Well then, Mr. Chair, I guess for the record, I would recommend that we uh, take advantage of this opportunity, officially. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Further comments? Thank you, Rochelle, for presenting that information to us. Uh, that completes all of the items that are on the agenda. Um, next meeting is June 23rd. Um, is this going to be the last hybrid meeting? 
I, th I think that the discretion, yeah, we, I think we're the preference is to have people come back in to chambers again, if unless there's some other reason they can't, I recognize sometimes it's not COVID related. That may be business related that folks can't be here every time, but. Okay. So be watching for the meeting call, but uh, I think, uh, We'll be here in Chambers next year, next month. And uh, believe me, that makes it a little easier to chair the, the meeting. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, as always, if you have items that you want us to consider in the agenda, go ahead and contact myself or Joanna and uh, we'll get them on the uh, agenda. Mr. Chairman, can we add, um the community recycling fund update because all during COVID it, quietly cardboard prices crept up. And so we were sending checks over and I don't need do have, has Carrie been giving you updates. I used to bring them in and track them and give them to Carrie. And I know that we started with the, when city hall was closed and stuff, we just started mailing them directly and Carrie has been tracking them, but cardboard prices have been recovering. So there's money there in case we want to look at doing another grant funding opportunity. Um, and open that up so we can maybe review how much is in the fund and maybe see if we want to do some sort of grant application opening. Just a thought. Thank you. Uh, Joanna, you want to work with uh, Carrie to go ahead and get an updated uh, balance on the account? Yes, I do have the number, but not exactly off the top of my head, but uh, yes, and we'll go through that for next. Perfect. Perfect. So with that, is there any, any uh, other items that need to be brought before the committee at this moment, commission? N not this moment, Mr. Chairman, but can we add um, residential composting to next meeting too, to just discuss that? Yes, uh, thank you. We'll go ahead and put that on the agenda too. Further recommendations? Well, very good. Then uh, having completed our business, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, identify the meeting is now adjourned. It is 5 p.m. and I very much appreciate your participation and look forward to being with you next month. Have a good evening. Thank you, Thanks, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.